soon as we let the dog ring move between those teeth, now it can't rotate without rotating the entire gear carrier. And that's how we put it in this case into second gear, as it would be this way. So really those shift forks, all that they do is move these teeth between the two gears, between second, neutral, first, right? So that's all we're doing when we move the gear shifter is moving this ring in and out to decide at what ratio the whole carrier, uh, gear carrier is going to spin. All right, we're gonna work on the uh, car prep for Road Atlanta. Uh, today we're starting with gears. I've got the car up in the air for the first time. It's kind of a process here to, to get ready to work on the car and get all the bodywork torn down before we can get started, but uh, we'll go ahead and time lapse that information and see how it turns out. Alrighty, that wasn't too bad. That's the, uh, the diffuser. So I'm gonna put all those bolts away and then we'll work on taking more of the obvious body work stuff up um, as well as getting it up on some roller stands. So uh, yay, that's a lot of fun, obviously. Okay, so that is basically taken apart. I'm still gonna take the nose and the front shock cover off, but uh, for the purposes of this video, we can now start working on the gearbox. So let me get the camera moved around so that y'all can see all the fun stuff that happens over on this side. But uh, yeah, that wasn't too long, wasn't too bad, but uh, definitely gotten better at it over, over all the attempts that I've been working in this shop. So uh, yeah, let's get set up on the other side. Okay, so here we are at the back of the car. This is the transmission right in here. I'm not sure if you can see that from the end plate, but uh, what we're gonna do is take off the rear cover, a bunch of 10 millimeter um, nuts that come off of there. Gotta loosen up the, uh, the rain light as well as the exhaust. And uh, we'll pull this whole rear wing assembly off from the rear cover and uh, get our first look at the different uh, pieces of the internals of the transmission. Um, I'm gonna put on thicker gloves this time because gear oil sucks but um, yeah we'll do another time lapse. All right, so that's what we've got. Uh, the back cover is off. This is actually a pretty cool uh, transmission seal setup compared to what we used to run before. You can see there's a seal that's pressed all the way around the outside. We used to use a lot of Permatex and uh, try to keep it sealed in, all that gear oil. And if you were trying to do a quick change, that didn't work so well. So that's a nice little addition here. Um, you can see the shifter coming in here. These are the shift forks. I've got it in second gear right now. Uh, as I back the car up onto those ramps, you just put it in gear to put it in park. So uh, you can tell that that's in second gear. We'll shift it back to neutral. And now we're in neutral. So this is our shift fork and it swings between these gear change, uh, push, pull things, pins, whatever we want to call them. But uh, yeah, so your first thing, this will be third gear if you push in. You pull back for fourth, etc. So 
So we'll get into a little bit more about the internals once we actually open it up. This is just the rear cover. Uh, the next step here is we're gonna take off these cotter pins. We're gonna release both of these bolts. We're gonna take off all of these 13 millimeters or half. I'm not exactly sure which one it is, but it is one of them officially. Uh, yeah, so uh, the shift lever's gotta come out and all of this will come out and then we'll get to see all the gears and start working on ratios. So uh, yeah, I might let it drain a little bit longer and, um, and then we'll time lapse it. Okay, that was pretty difficult. Um, shouldn't have been that difficult. Let's go ahead and catch all that nasty gear oil. But uh, yeah, so you may have noticed what I had to do there. Probably didn't because I did that on a uh, time lapse. But uh, yeah, so we went ahead and took out the shift fork that comes off. Uh, then what I had to do was engage reverse. And then I guess this is uh, third gear. And so now they don't turn. Um, obviously you wouldn't want this while the engine's spinning or you'd blow up the transmission, but uh, it helps us get the torque that we need to turn these nuts here uh, to get that cotter pin out on the bottom one, uh, which is kind of interesting that it spun uh, while we were racing at VIR. So uh, now what I'm going to do is back both of those off with both third gear and reversed and engaged, uh, and that'll allow us to put more than the, I believe it's 105 foot pounds. Uh, I'm going to check it, obviously, but I think it's 105. I'll correct it if I'm wrong. So, uh, so that's the next step is to loosen both of those nuts. And then we'll back off the rest of the, uh, the cover here, the transmission, and, uh, and pull everything out. So it'll be exciting. We'll go ahead and start the time lapse. <laughs> Yep, it was half inch, not 13 millimeter. Okay, I think we got everything out of here, all the bolts. Yep, are out. Uh, the only thing holding it in is these two nuts and then a seal on the back side here. Um, so next I'm gonna take it back to neutral. And uh, once we take it out of neutral, uh, we'll back off this lower bolt and, uh, well, it might be the upper bolt. One of these bolts <laughs> is the one that uh, you have to take off for the, uh, the input shaft. So anyway, um, let's go ahead and do that. Okay, I'm gonna let it drain a little bit longer uh, for the gear oil again. Um, I'm gonna pull this drain tank, whatever we wanna call it, the, the oil drain, and um, go ahead and start working on the actual gearbox uh, worktop here. So uh, yeah, uh, give it a second. I'm gonna clean up a bit and get some tools organized and uh, hopefully it's gonna be done draining by then. Okay, we're back, we're done draining. Um, we're gonna take off this, uh, this gearbox and take a look inside. Uh, there wasn't a ton of gear oil that came out. Um, usually runs about a quart, quart and a half. A uh, quart should come out on a, when we pull it out of here. But anyway, uh, let's take a look real quick and see what we got inside. Uh, first thing we're gonna do actually, this top one here uh, needs to come off and this is a left hand thread. So we'll actually turn this to the right and that'll back out that nut. All right, so then we have to make sure there's a, a reverse gear that's on the outside as well as a, a washer and a bearing. Uh, just gotta take some care of that. And then as we pull this out, there will be gears that are riding here on this, uh, this input shaft. And uh, so it's important that we uh, hold those gears as they come off of this, that they don't fall off. So 
anyway, we'll go ahead and pull this out and, and take a little bit of extra care. Okay, so uh, that's the internals of the, uh, of the transmission here. Uh, what we're gonna do is go through the gears. You can see how they all mesh right here at this point. Um, it's actually gonna be kinda hard for me to do this camera work. Let's do this. I'm gonna set up the camera somewhere else and we'll dive into it. All right, so we've gotten the uh, transmission out of the back of the car. Uh, if you notice here, we've basically got two sets of gears. This is the actual input shaft to the transmission. So if you can see these splines inside, uh, this actually is a shaft that runs through the differential, through the bell housing, to the back of the engine, um, and that's where the clutch engages and disengages. So that shaft comes through and turns this as an input shaft. So as you can see, the gears are, are lined up and touching. So as this turns, it actually rotates. Got to be very careful with these. It'll rotate all of the gears. They're all in contact at the same time. So, uh, so what that does, as they're in contact, um, and actually they should be able to spin here freely. Fingers crossed. There we go. So as I rotate it, see how the center splines on the output shaft are not turning. That's the whole point of how we shift gears. So let's go ahead and move that back. So now I've engaged first gear and I'll show you in a bit how that happens. But uh, now that that's engaged, when I turn it, you can see the splines turning. So what we could do is we could judge how many revolutions here versus how many revolutions we see on the inside. And that's our gear ratio, right? Because first gear is engaged right now. So uh, so once these splines are turning, these are actually turning the output shaft, which is still in the car. The, uh, the output shaft is connected to the differential and the differential is what spins the wheels, right? So we have engine coming in here and whatever the ratio difference is from the gears that are being uh, connected to the gear carrier in the center uh, dictates the speed of the output shaft, which changes uh, with the, the ring and pinion in the differential for the gears or for the tires and the wheels to spin at the right, uh, right speed, right? Based on our engine RPM. So I find this stuff interesting. Um, we're going to go ahead and take this apart. I hope it doesn't all fall apart as I'm actually taking, taking uh, it piece by piece. Um, these things don't like to sit like this outside of the car. Obviously, if we had the output shaft in there, it would make it a whole lot easier to explain. Uh, but these things are kind of free floating in here. So uh, I'm going to take it apart and kind of show you how first and second gear operate and how we're engaging those. So cross, cross your fingers, this doesn't all fall apart. Okay, so that went well. Uh, what I was able to do is actually take out first gear and second gear on the output side. So uh, if you can see here, we, we can spin freely each gear and it's independent of the actual gear carrier inside that goes onto the output shaft. And same thing on the back for second gear. As second gear spins, it can sp spin freely. And it's because we have these bearings, these roller bearings that are on the, uh, the gear carrier. So what actually shifts and, and engages the gears here? is actually here in the middle. This is what we call a dog ring. And uh, it is connected very well uh, to this center gear carrier, right? So this piece here, we go ahead and start taking pieces off. We'll take off first gear, because that's the main one we're actually changing. And we'll take off that bearing, keep it together. And so if you can see the dog ring here, it comes off, but uh, it's got these splines that line up. So once we get that lined up properly, 
once we are engaged with the dog ring to an actual gear, that's what transfers the, uh, the rotation of this gear, the teeth on the gear, to the rotation of the gear carrier. And the way that happens is these little, I don't know how, how well you can see it, but each of these little um, teeth, if you will, and I assume that's how it gets its, its name, the dog ring, but these teeth engage between the, the teeth on the gears. So let me show you kind of what that looks like. Uh, the alignment has to be nearly perfect. So, so as the gear spins by itself, there's no engagement, right? So this would be neutral. As soon as we let the dog ring move between those teeth, now it can't rotate without rotating the entire gear carrier. And that's how we put it in this case into second gear, as it would be this way. So really those shift forks, all that they do is move these teeth between the two gears, between second, neutral, first, right? So that's all we're doing when we move the gear shifter is moving this ring in and out to decide at what ratio the whole carrier, uh, gear carrier is going to spin. And that's what puts the right rotation into the output shaft, into the differential, into the uh, CVs, the axles, and then into the, the wheels. So uh, all of that's going on. And uh, if you notice in this video a little later, I'm wearing different clothes. It's actually been like a week. I, was, uh, I ordered two more of these. Um, well, actually, I'll throw some pictures up of the issue that I ran into, but uh, not sure if you can see it, but these things have gotten worn down like crazy. This one's actually in terrible shape. So uh, one of the things we're going to do while we're in here is replace it. We've got two more dog rings to put in. They're not really supposed to wear, but they do. And uh, that's the point we want to fail as opposed to a gear. Those are much more expensive. So anyway, um, we're going to go ahead and continue to tear this apart. And uh, I'll stop to explain as we get to something else more interesting. But next section I'm going to pull is actually going to be the uh, third and fourth gear. And then we'll pull out the input shaft and make sure we keep everything aligned properly. All right, so let's cover the, uh, the input shaft, if you will. You got your first gear, second, third, fourth. And um, you can kind of see how this works with the overall diameter. And so on the output side, it starts big and shrinks so that they're constantly in touch. And we have these spacers, and these spacers are really set up just to help us make sure we're, um, we're having good distance between shift points. God forbid we, uh, we have two gears engaged at once. That would cause a major issue. So um, to be able to change first gear, we've got to take off fourth, third, second, and uh, as well as these spacers in between. So I'm gonna do that and uh, do my best to keep them all separate. All right, so we got our first gear here. And we've got our first gear here. So what we're going to do, they, they work together. Uh, we need to get the, the correct uh, gear ratio that we want for Road Atlanta. And we'll replace all of this, get it thrown back together with the new dog rings. So uh, we'll do kind of a fast forward and maybe a cut in case I mess up. Because, yeah, that happens a lot around here. All right, so uh, some big time nerd stuff. This is the data acquisition software. So what we're tracking here uh, on this top graph here is gonna be speed, lateral acceleration, RPM, and throttle position. This is not super great data, um, but this was from my Road Atlanta race um, back at the end of July. So what I'm gonna actually do, let me close this out. This is all in, in the name of gearing, right? Like we're trying to figure out what gears we need for Road Atlanta. Uh, down here, you can see the, uh, the track map where we are. You start turn one, two, three, four, five. Looks like our lowest speed corner is gonna be in turn seven. So you can see the, the blue triangle there. It shows us our lowest speed on the track is 53.9. Um, we also go all the way to 10A and 10A we are doing uh, jumps over here, 59. So let's say 55 and 60 is our uh, speed at our slowest points on the track. So um, what I'm gonna do is jump over to my gearing um, spreadsheet. And this was something I got from Phil Picard, who I bought the car from. Uh, actually, Steve Dweck owned the car. Phil Picard ran and maintained the car. And, did the actual uh, sales since he was holding it. So what I've already entered in here 
is uh, our gearing, um, first, second, third, fourth gear. Uh, we've got our tire diameter, final drive. And I did a 5,600 RPM um, calculation, basically, is what I'm doing here. And that's per some guidance I got from uh, a couple of people. But um, at 5,600, that puts us in this scenario at a 66 miles an hour which um, means that we're going to be too low of an RPM in first gear, especially for turn seven. If you remember turn seven here, um, sorry about that track map getting in the way, but uh, 55, degree, uh, 55 miles an hour is what we're looking at there. So um, these are some additional first gears I've already input. So we can see where do we want to go actually with our gearing to keep this 5,600 RPM. Um, so if we're at 62, that looks to be the best, our uh, 16 to 34 ratio here. Um, what does that do at our shift point? Let's see. Um, okay, so that takes us all the way up to 80.1 miles an hour before we have to shift um, into second. So it looks like the 16, 34 gear ratio is what I'm gonna be using. So let me go ahead and input that over here, 16, 34 alrighty and uh, so that's going to show first gear at 72 is our shift point this is uh, the, the most important race of my uh, year here so we'll say 72 instead of the 7,000 or 68 that I've done in the previous races but uh, we'll have an 80 mile an hour first gear 110 roughly in second 130 and 145 here and um, we also need to pay attention to the drop. How, how many RPMs are we dropping in each gear here? So that you can see kind of as far as that'll drop, we're actually going just barely to 6,000 um, in this scenario. And here we're up to, what is that, 64? So 6,400 um, from third to fourth. So these are our gears. Uh, let's go ahead and start getting back to work, putting our gears together. All right, so here we are with the, the two first gears. Uh, the first one is, let's go through and kind of compare them. This is the one we actually just took out. It's a uh, 3416, so that means 34 teeth on this one. And uh, what I'm changing it to, which may be contrary to the, the video that I just uh, added before this part on what we're choosing. Um, what I'm going with is actually a 3015. So uh, the way I'm looking at all of this, and you can see overall diameter here, um, and for the teeth to line up, it, it's just geometric that they need to line up. But uh, for a 3015, you basically have two to one, right? So you have um, two input rotations per output rotation, right? So two to one. Um, whereas what we have over here is a, a 1634, so it's actually 2.1 two five or one six three or something crazy two point sum right it's more than two so uh so what we're doing is we're actually going to a bit of a shorter gear uh, jumping to the 3015 and by shorter what that means is just that the overall um output amount is going to be uh closer to two to one so we're going to go faster at the top end of this one than we would on this one. And uh, I think it was on that Excel spreadsheet that I had, so you'll see the difference. We'll go back, I'll put a little video thing up top about what, uh, what the difference is, but this has been a tough call. Uh, my biggest thing is I don't want to be at the top of a gear as I'm exiting a corner uh, and have to shift you know, on a rumble strip or uh, you know, close to the edge of the track. I'd rather be moving in a straight line when I'm shifting. And so that's why I'm thinking going with a bit taller gear as opposed to the 1634 that was in it. So 1634 here is uh, the, the big rings. And then obviously we can look at the difference in the two smalls. So this is the, uh, the 15 and this is the 16, if you just count them. Um, but really it's how do they interact with their alternate side of the gear. So not much of a difference here as far as overall size. Uh, it still needs to fit on the input shaft. And, uh, and so we're just looking at the output ratio. So Let's go ahead and start putting this back together here. Actually, I'm going to clean this off a little bit. These have been sitting in a gearbox for a long time without use. So I want to make sure that they're 
cleaned up and oiled a little bit and the oil on my hands should suffice. And uh, there's some dirt down in here we'll clean. So normal, uh, let's see, the normal gear for first and then we'll throw in the second. We're not changing second, third or fourth. Road Atlanta and VIR are, are strangely pretty similar uh, as far as shape and as far as some of the corners, but uh, yeah, not identical, that's for sure. So one, two, three, and we've got our big spacer, which basically just mimics, mimics the difference here on the first input. And there's our fourth gear. and our last washer there. So put that to the side and we will put the first gear after we clean it back into our gear carrier and replace those dog, dog rings while we're here. And that should make shifting a whole lot easier. If y'all have watched those videos I've posted, um, there's Actually, in, I think there are two spots in that four minute video I posted, the RA Motorsports intro or whatever, that is, uh, you can hear two missed shifts <laughs> if you're really paying attention. And uh, this should actually help a lot with that. Not the gear itself, but the dog rings. Those, those last dog rings were a little bit on the older, older side and I'll throw those pictures up there, like I said, so you can see. All right, so pull that dog ring. And so you can tell us just brand new. That's how, they're, how they look coming straight from the factory. And that's my new spare. That one's not in terrible shape. It's not great, but Definitely not as bad as the other one. I think we're going to retake that. Holy crap. Holy crap. What a dumbass. Oh well. Happens. <laughs>